to build a hand crank generator that can be used to produce electricity anywhere to either charge my phone, power a light, or an upcoming project that requires one. There are many hand crank generators available online and I've previously tested one for charging my phone. Though due to a large gear ratio and cheap brushed motor as a generator, it was very inefficient. It's quite common to use brushed electric motors as generators because if you spin the shaft, you can actually generate electricity at the wires. But the problem is with this is that it needs to spin at really high RPM. So the speed that you can spin a hand crank at is far too low for this kind of motor to generate say 10 volts or so. Uh, so we need a huge gear ratio to convert the hand crank speed up to the higher RPM at the motor speed. Alternatively, we can build our own alternator. I've done this in the past when I built a flywheel battery, which used an axial flux alternator to generate electricity. This works by spinning two plates of magnets either side of some copper coils. Each magnet is mounted with alternating poles, so one has its north pole facing the camera and the next has its south pole facing the camera. So when placing a coil next to the magnet and spinning them, the magnetic field changes, creating a current within the coil. And because of the alternating magnet poles, this magnet will produce a current in this direction, and the other magnet will produce it in the opposite direction. And the direction of the current flow will alternate as the magnet spin. So let's replicate this alternator design with some small modifications to make it suitable for the hand crank generator. I start the work with the flow of the magnet, otherwise known as the rotor, as it rotates the this was simply printed from PLA plastic as it's cheap, non-conductive and doesn't affect the magnetic field. Then I bought some high quality N52 grade magnets that simply press fit into the rotor, making for the polarity of the magnet to alternate around the circumference. I then printed a housing that will hold the rotor, as well as a shaft that is keyed, which will be important later. Then I printed the mount for the stator, or the stationary portion of the alternator, which will eventually hold the coils in position. And finally, on top of that, I can mount the second rotor, which is also keyed, to keep it spinning at the same rate as the first rotor on the other side. Now I need to make the coils that will be sandwiched between the two. At first, I used this 0.8mm enamel copper wire, but it didn't allow many turns of wire, resulting in a low output voltage. The number of turns of wire in the coil is very important, as generally more turns of wire means a higher output voltage. So I rewound the coils with much thinner wire so that I could get more turns, which should increase the voltage. Another factor that affects the output voltage is the speed of the magnet to pass the coil. So a gear ratio that will allow me to spin the rotors faster, which increases the voltage significantly. The final method to increasing the output voltage is to connect the coils in series. Similar to connecting two batteries in series will double the voltage. This works the same with the coils. So I wound seven more coils, each with 350 turns of wire, making a total of eight coils and 2,800 turns of wire, which were all glued to the central stator and soldered together in a configuration of two in series and four in parallel, which as I just mentioned, the number of coils in series affects the output voltage and the number of coils in parallel affects the current capabilities. So two in series it should produce about 15 to 20 volts and four in parallel should be able to handle the current produced by my manual arm strength. The coils are then soldered to a full bridge rectifier which is just four diodes that convert the alternating current or AC into direct current or DC. This works because the diodes only let electricity flow through in one direction. So if the coil produces current in the clockwise direction, it will flow from the coil down through this diode over towards the LED. Then after the LED, it will flow towards the top of the rectifier and down through this diode, which connects it back to the coil, completing the circuit. But if the coil creates current in the anti-clockwise direction, it will flow through this wire to the rectifier, down through this diode, over to the LED, back towards the top of the rectifier and down through the diode to complete the circuit. So no matter the current direction in the